and Timo is going to give the presentation about the state of Oscari uh, for end users. Uh, Timo is a senior GIS expert interested in spatial and stat statistical data visualization and software development. So thank you for joining us, Timo. And I'm going to add your, your screen here. And the floor is yours. OK, thank you. Can, we, can you hear me? All right. Uh, yes, yes, we can hear you. You can? Yes. OK, thank you. I'll try to get the presentation started. OK, uh, good morning or, or good afternoon, whatever the time is, is for you or wherever you're at in, in the world. I wish I could see you live, but I only can see my screen and, and a camera. Uh, greetings from, from Finland. I'm uh, Timo Arnio from the National Land Survey of Finland. And uh, the topic of my presentation is State of Oscari and especially for end users. Uh, let's get to it. Uh, the agenda for today, I have only three bullets. So introduction and our specialties, a little bit about Oscari for those of you who maybe don't know it so well. And then the beef is what's new since Bucharest. So there's been two years since the last uh, Fosu G conference and uh, a whole lot of things have happened in, in Oscari and, and in the development. And uh, this presentation might turn out to be more of a feature frenzy than a state of Oscari because there's a lot of sli slides and, and information. So let's see how it goes. And then last, I'm going to say a couple of words about the future. So uh, what are we planning and what are we going to do in, in the uh, next year and, and rest of this year as well. And just a side note to those of you who are more, more technical and, and or developers, there will be a separate presentation for the, uh, aimed for developers later today, uh, half past three, Buenos Aires time in the same room, uh, Cordoba. So please attend that session as well. My uh, good colleague, Sami Makinan is, is giving that presentation. So introduction, if you go to uh, Oscari.org, you will find our, our kind of slogan. Oscari is a tool for easily building multi-purpose web mapping application utilizing distributed spatial data infrastructures. That's kind of a mouthful right there. And maybe we could come up with something more more selling. Selling, but let's let's open up that a bit. So you can use Oscari to set up geo portals. There are two examples. The, Arctic SDI initiatives, GeoPortal, and the National GeoPortal uh, of Finland. So uh, go ahead and try those URLs if you like. Uh, you can also set up uh, WebGIS services. Here I have an example uh, of the Finnish Environmental Institute. Uh, that's actually more of a blog post, but you can check that out as well. Uh, for creating embedded maps and web applications utilizing M an embedded map. So we have an RPC integration. I will uh, say a couple of words more on the next slide, but there's also an example of, of such implementation on that uh, behind that link. And also some examples about how to use that, that integration and API. Uh, Oscar is completely browser-based for the end user that is. So, so the end user doesn't have to install anything, just has to go to the service URL and or URL and open up open up the single page application. And therefore, it's also platform independent, at least to some extent. Mm, we support most uh, of the relevant OGC services and even more. So you have your usual web feature services, web feature service, transactional and web map file service, web map service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we have pretty good support for all of these and, and uh, also different versions. So, so you uh, pretty much anything you have available via OGC APIs, we can we can read and and somehow visualize or, or support. And furthermore, we have some support for statistical data APIs for creating statistical maps and thematic maps. A couple of words about that on the next slide as well, I suppose. So, what makes us different? What makes us a bit special? How do we differ from the so-called competitors. Uh, there's a 
whole bunch of great free and open source software uh, to achieve your goals, but when to choose Oscari and, and what makes us different. So we've always uh, heavily relied on integration to spatial data infrastructures. So that means basically those OGC, uh, OGC services and APIs I mentioned on the previous slides. We, we can pretty much integrate to any of those, those services. And we have also support for statistical data, as I mentioned, and this tool for creating thematic maps and time series and animations and everything fancy you can think of with the statistical data. Uh, we support Mapbox vector tiles out of the box, uh, web map service time for time series and animations, and web feature service transactional for data collection or data management. Uh, Embedded maps and RPC API, that's probably something that almost everyone else has as well, but but we you can create embedded maps or publish maps using Oscari, and you can build integrations to, um, with other web applications and external data sources. So you can kind of communicate with the map and, and the web application. And to sum it up, what Oscar provides you, it provides you with always up-to-date data and software via these different APIs, statistical data, spatial data, user zone data, etc., etc., running in your web browser. And what are the benefits? No installations, no update installations, no data set downloads. You always utilize the kind of uh, most fresh data from the uh, infrastructure directly from the data producers and as you are using the kind of master data source you don't have to download again anything when the date changes api integrations not just data so you can integrate to routing services or different kinds of different services as well and sharing your work uh, already mentioned the embedded maps or published maps and you can also share a map link or or your favorite fishing place or what have you. So that's in short, about five minutes, Oscar, if, if you're not familiar with it yet. And let's go to the beef. So what's new since Bucharest? Uh, typically we release about four releases in, in a year. And in 2020, we had four releases as planned, uh, 155, 156, 2.0 and 2.1 about one per quartal, so once in every three months. Uh, this year we've had three releases so far. One is coming very soon, next week hopefully. I have a couple of words about that as well in the end of this presentation. And I was talking about the feature frenzy, so I just, I'm just gonna go through all of these releases and, and have a couple of, couple of um, the most interesting uh, developments for end users per version. So let's start. Uh, Oscar 1.55, March 2020, uh, we brought, brought a new tool for controlling time in the 3D mode, and a new map layer admin tool was introduced, a uh, new, new GPX parser, uh, getting ready to get rid of uh, Google or GDAL, however you like it, and some fixes for web feature service handling. Uh, just to note, I have a couple of bolded bullets, or one to zero to two uh, bolded bullets on each version. So I will tell a couple of more words on those, those because I like to highlight them. So controlling time in 3D, we made this nice tool uh, that you can kind of control the time when you are when you are using the 3D mode of Oscar. So here you can see, hopefully the video works for you or the animation. So so the shadows are moving according to the position of the sun and you have some 3D, 3D buildings there with textures and nice little setup. Uh, new map layer admin tool. This was a kind of huge task, took maybe a bit longer than we originally thought, but it's, it's very nice now and completely rewritten with uh, React. We used to use uh, jQuery for that, so we, we have some, let's say, fresher libraries in use from now on. And how it works, it's a four-step wizard user interface. 
you have I have here actually two screenshots with the first one how it looks when you start you start adding a new layer you select the type of the service you're adding so here you can also see what what we support how many different types of, of data we support and once you click on in one of these you will be asked uh, the service URL or the interface URL you enter that and you you get to select the map layer behind that URL and uh, the second screenshot is from the last last uh, step of the wizard where you enter the kind of details and permissions and styling and uh, all kinds of things you can you can uh, customize with Oscar uh, next version uh, 1.56 June 2020 uh, preparing for for the 2.0 release so postgresql uh, 12 support and other library updates preparing for the for the bigger uh, version major version uh, bump uh, enhancements to map layer admin tool uh, i have an example about that and then some uh, support for gpx 1.1 and as was discussed before the GDL, uh de dependency was removed uh, harmonized styling on database level so Oscar has a ton of places where you have different or used to have different kind of styling definitions so what we did here is that when when you have different styles uh, well, you, well you used to have different styles and that now we harmonize them all in the database we don't have a user interface for everything yet but at least on the database level they are now in the same same kind of format all of the styling definitions also, we removed some uh, parts of old web feature service implementation. And here is the example of the map layer admin uh, validation that we um, enhanced or added in this version. So now this is the same screenshot I had before, but a bit lower from the dialog. So when I'm adding this layer, and if I have not entered all the required information, I will be told what is still missing and what, what do I have to fill in in order to continue. Uh, moving on, 2.0, September 2020. Uh, this was mostly a kind of server-side update and library update and also a lot of bug fixes. Uh, nothing fancy, nothing really to show for the end users, so not in this presentation, except for better life expectancy for the whole project, obviously, when, when all of this was updated. and. Uh, uh, a lot of things were done in the database side as well. I, I'm sure my colleague will go into more details with those in the later presentation. 2.1, uh, November 2020, uh, Web Feature Service layer filtering implemented. So now you can configure a layer with an included fil uh, filter in place. Uh, uh, optional zoom limits, added uh, clustered server environment, improvements uh, and a new react based implementation for, of the my place form these are may, maybe the most important for end users i will probably run out of time so i have to speed up uh, so web feature service layer filtering you can now configure the filtered um, web feature service source so if you have let's say uh, a, a web feature service feature type that has tons of features but you don't want all of them in your service you can create a filter and uh, well this is just a picture to show how, what kind of a case you can have so that, so that you have hundreds of points and you only want to show some of them so that's very handy for that kind of use cases new my place form again we are doing a lot of rewriting things with react so this is just a just a screenshot of that new implementation Okay, uh, moving on to this year, 2.2, March. Uh, new announcements functionality, very handy for, for um, uh, service uh, managers or administrators and, and also very helpful for end users. Uh, I will have a picture or a screenshot of that as well. Uh, some, some new ways for visualizing time series layers. Like I mentioned, we have support for uh, webmap service time. And uh, added support for several legends. So if you have a web service with several styles, several legends, we can now support that or since March. 
and a React-based vector styling user interface for admins. This is not really for end users, but it's a it's a thing that will will come the uh, kind of norm in Oscar pretty soon. So announcements. Uh, tool to provide users with service announcements. Very simple thing. So an admin can kind of enter an announcement or as many as, as needed, select the range date range when it showed and configure it to automatically pop up for the end users. And when the end user is, is uh, entering the service, he or she will be then shown this kind of announcement announcing in this case, a service break, very handy. Uh, 2.3, uh, May this year, a new swipe tool was introduced, uh, GeoJSON export for my places. Uh, some, some more not so relevant, smaller things and library updates like always. And we removed old layer listing tools. Uh, we are also like GeoX, the previous presentation, quite old project. So we all also have to go through our old uh, code base and, and clean up a bit when we refactor and rewrite things. So swipe tool, again, rather simple tool. You can, you can compare uh, two layers easily, select two layers you want to, want to compare, and then there will be a central line that you can adjust as you, as you want. Again, very, very powerful. And GeoJSON export for my places. So when you have clicked and, and saved your own, own phishing places or workplaces or home offices or whatever you have, you can now export them as GeoJSON from Oscar instances. All right, last, uh, 2.4 June this year. Uh, I'm not sure anymore if I mentioned, but this year we have been, um, uh, I have done a lot of work on, on, on performance improvements, and there are a couple of examples of that in this and the, also the next version. So for layer, layer listing user interface, some improvements. I have a couple of more words on that and tidied up a bit on the map links that you can share from Oscar so the links wouldn't be so long and, and ugly. <laughs> and uh, some improvements to the web map service uh, layer legends I was mentioning before. So. Now they are actually parsed from the capabilities like they should be and also support for external or custom legends. So sometimes you have cases where the service actually doesn't doesn't include a proper uh, image in the in the capabilities, but you just have to know where, where the legend is. So you can use that as well. Uh, performance improvements very quick. Uh, so the map layer listing JSON was compact and, and cached as map players do not change that often. And some examples from our national geo portal, loading time from two seconds to 300 milliseconds, uh, thanks to caching of the response. And the JSON uh, size went down from 1.2 megabytes to 270 kilobytes. Uh, we just removed the extent information from the, from the uh, kind of per layer information, which is not needed while you're listing the layers. And this was a huge performance increase for for end users, especially in, in uh, instances where there's a lot of traffic and a lot of users daily. Uh, OK, moving on to the future. Uh, this is 2.5, hopefully released next week or the week after. Uh, more performance improvements, handling of uh, vector feature styles. We have some, uh, uh, well, we will do less styling, let's say there are some some loops that are, are going on too long and, and unnecessary. So we are getting rid of those while, while styling. There's hover styling improvements and, and basic uh, feature styling improvements coming in that. Also webmap type service style grids are converted to JSON and again, less JSON or less data has to be transferred between the server and the client. Uh, programmatical update of vector layers for real-time data. So if sometimes you have uh, layers that you know that the content has updated, so there will be, will be a, a, a request that you can call to update the contents of the map. And as, as usual, library updates, op layers and, and D and bug fix, fixes as, as always. Okay, what's then next? Uh, this fall, we will be working a bit on, on thematic maps tool. 
by adding the possibility to use metadata about the statistical data so that you can automate the user interface. A uh, couple of examples, if you know that the, your statistical indicator has absolute values, you should use point symbol maps for visualization. If you know that they're relative values, you can use crop left maps. Uh, if, you, if there are positive and ne negative values, you can use a diverging color scheme. Uh, if you know the re relations of statistical indicators, you can make automated bar charts. Think about uh, population uh, by age, for example, showing an automated bar chart per, per age group. And the most important thing, no more crappy statistical mapping. So it will be harder to make a crappy statistical map when, when the user interface will help you through uh, more React implementations and a mobile uh, UI for GeoPortal mode. And this is the last, uh, second to last slide, the example of that. So Oscar has a lot of support for, for mobile devices, but the kind of GeoPortal side, so the main Oscar side is, is not yet that well supported. Here is a screenshot I took today with my iPhone, and, and here is a picture of the sketch, how it's supposed to look. So I really hope we get to from this to this. Uh, during the next year, and we can show showcase this in the next year's conference. Uh, I think that's all. Thank you from my side. Thank you, Timo, for for the presentation. And uh, we have some. Uh, I see one question on the on, on the chat. So are you planning to support also other OGC API standards in the future? Uh, as they are released, <laughs> yes. So uh, I think web map service or will be a de facto standard or, or will be used quite a long time still. But, but as they are released and, and uh, they come out, of course, we will, we will build uh, support to those as well. OK, thanks. Uh, there are more questions coming along. Uh, there's one, okay. Uh, who has been supporting the project so far? Who will do it in the future? Is the is long-term sustainability ensured in some way? Oh, that's that's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, Oscar is quite long already, uh, ready, uh, or quite old, let's say. Started before 2010, you could even, even say so. Uh, National Land Survey of Finland has always been the kind of main contributor and, and um, maintainer of the of the project. But we have also a kind of community. Much of it is happening in Finland so far. But anyway, we have a lot of lot of um, public organization and uh, public organization and some companies as well in the community. We have some 40 members, and uh, I would say that it the sustainability is is ensured uh, with having such a good good and big community. Um, of course, we have still room to improve and room to grow in, within that community. And, and our kind of practices can, can be, a, be a lot better. And, and especially, let's say, uh, communication could be, a, could be better. But um, there are a lot of, for the, for the first question, so the National Land Survey has been the biggest kind of sponsor of this project so far. And then there, there is Statistics Finland. There is um, Finnish Environmental Agency, uh, Finnish Transport Agency, just from the top of my head, uh, and some bigger cities in Finland are also also members of the community. So we have quite a good, uh, let's say, community at least in in Finland. We hope to get more international, of course. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I don't see any more questions on the on the chat, so I guess um, that's it. Thank you for for giving the presentation and joining here. Thank and you so much. Nice to have you here. All right. Thanks. So that was it. Uh, that was it for the the Cordoba session this morning. Uh, thanks everybody, all the all the participants for keeping uh, track of time uh, and uh, for for their excellent presentations. 
So uh, we are going to end this broadcast right now and join us again uh, in, in, in the sessions, the afternoon sessions. So goodbye.